Josh Norman. I'd cut Josh Norman Monday morning, first thing. Um, I think Josh Norman, who committed a pretty bad penalty, a taunting penalty, which we could debate whether or not he deserved a taunting penalty, whether the NFL should even be calling taunting penalties. But here's what we know. The rules are well established. The Niners made a big stop on third down, and uh, Josh Norman committed a taunting penalty that got the ball back first first down instead of a third down leading to a field goal attempt for the Arizona Cardinals. It weirdly included also a 15-yard penalty on Cliff Kingsbury. Hey, we're glad you're watching our video. Subscribe to our channel. Give this video a like. We appreciate it. Yep. 50% of you are not subscribed to the channel. And also, I need you to subscribe to the podcast below in the description. We're sponsored by Tito's Handmade Vodka. Yes, we are. Number one vodka in America. On to the video, uh, which was, I, I don't know, Cliff and Josh Norman were going at it, which was uh, interesting. Uh, after the game, here's a tweet from David Lombardi, DJ Humphreys, the guy that was getting in the face with Josh Norman said, I saw him walking towards Cliff, like a tough guy flexing his arm. So I wanted to nip it in the butt. I was looking for him after the game, but I couldn't find him. Um, I had my helmet off. I wanted to give him an advantage. So I'd cut Josh Norman, not just because Wait, Josh, DJ Humphreys was acting like he was going to fight Josh Norman. Like protecting yeah, he his said, coach. I was looking for him after the game, but I couldn't find him. I had my helmet off. I wanted to give him an advantage. <laughs> But I'd cut him, John, and it's not because just he committed the penalty and not just because Tavon Wilson was trying to get him out of the game, basically waving to the sideline, like, get this guy off the field, and Josh Norman was pushing him too. But he doesn't have a good reputation. He didn't have a great one when you got him. What he did as a player, it's not been particularly impressive on the field. And then in a desperate game, when you could not afford stupid mistakes, he made a stupid mistake. And it's kind of his MO, and it's kind of his history. And I think he represents the 49ers organizationally compromising their values to sign this guy that they probably wouldn't want on their roster most years. If you told John Lynch and Kyle Shannon, go build the roster you want, they wouldn't have Josh Norman on it. But he's on it because they had to make a compromise because they desperately needed a cornerback. So they signed this guy who was not on another team. Well, guess what? It bit him in the ass. Well, I think he also represents through eight – Eight, nine games, three and five, I guess eight games, week nine, because they had the bye week. What looks like, you know, in the immediate impact, one of the biggest joke drafts we've ever seen. Obviously, the quarterback's not playing, and he's going to, you know, sway the draft one way. But minus the first-round pick, when you draft a guard, if I said you're going into a draft, what are the easiest positions to pick? It would be running backs. Like, you should be able to get a running back in a draft who can contribute. And interior offensive linemen. You could also say defensive tackles, but I think sometimes if you don't get a pass rush, it's hard. You think the defensive tackle sucks, but a guard or a center. And the reason they signed Josh Norman is because they feel they don't have any corners. Well, they drafted two corners. One guy in the third round and another guy in the fifth round, and neither guy can play. Neither of them can play. And then today, Aaron Banks is, is inactive for it feels like every single game this year. Their offensive line, in you know, their interior offensive line is not great. Brunskill is not a very good player. You drafted this guy in the second round, not the fifth. He cannot dress. Trey Sermon, who you used a third-round pick on. So you're watching Josh Norman and some of these random guys, but you had a bunch. It's not like the Niners traded up for Trey Lance, and they are only able to get four picks. It was Trey Lance, Elijah Mitchell, you know, a couple other random guys. Like, they had a lot of picks last year. And none of these motherfuckers are playing because all these old guys like Josh Norman, like why is Josh Norman in the game? If you hadn't drafted a corner, I'd go, listen, they did a poor job developing the depth. They had a guy get injured and they were in a tight spot. But for this team is three and five, not winning. They're, they're terrible on defense and none of their young corners play. Like Josh Norman is getting smoked. The, Josh Norman's backup, another old has been who was never that great. Gets trucked, like you said, by Eno. I, I assumed it was James Conner. I, I, I had kind of turned down the volume by then. So it's like those guys aren't even getting the reps. Your, your draft is an embarrassment right now. And this goes back to Kyle. I, I, I just think he's got – I don't like my coaches to have too much juice in my draft. I, I just don't. And I think that team who you just witnessed, don't they feel like they have a shitload of talent right now on Arizona? Just their play speed, their backups, they're just defensively everywhere. 
Do you, do you feel that watching the Arizona Cardinals play this, this I year? I feel they... like watching them on defense. I didn't feel that way necessarily watching them on November 7th against the 49ers on offense, but they looked good. Yeah. But offensively, but I, they, they, they're all their top players are out. Right? Yeah, well, I know. That's what I'm saying. And, and still, A. Wesley looks but, made but, some but, but defensively, if like for First, example, you, yeah. you, you, you agree they're very, very talented. Yes. Cliff Kingsbury is not dictating the draft. Kind is. Well, Kyle's dictating the draft. And that, that to me, it shows you, like, and here's what I know Kyle is dictating. Now, you could argue that, like, third, fourth round, maybe Lynch has a big juice, whatever. He is definitely dictating who's on the field. You cannot tell me, well, D'Amico's telling him Josh Norman. Well, if that's the case, that's a fucking joke. And I, I have to assume that Josh Norman is out there because Kyle Shanahan wants him out there and does not trust even if he's going, well, maybe D'Amico's telling them, or maybe, you know, they're, they're position coaches. The young kids aren't ready. How about this, Kyle? You're the boss. I want to fucking see him on the field. You tell me one more time, Aaron Banks is getting a lot of good, good run in the scout team. Well, you drafted this guy in the second round, and he's a guard. A guard in the second round. I think we yeah, well, all but agree. Look, if you, if you can't get a this, guard to play. I like would Josh say this Norman, about Aaron Banks. Josh Norman shouldn't even be here. I will say this about Aaron Banks. If you're if you got a guard that's not ready to play, it's a lot more dangerous on the field than a corner that's not ready to but play. But how, how could you possibly know that? I mean, maybe he's getting beaten practice every day. I don't know. I'd love to see him too, but that's one where it's don't compound your mistake by putting him on the field when he doesn't belong there. But how, how but I've seen Lenore, these like Lenore and Ambry Thomas can't be any worse because I'd rather if he could play right tackle, that'd be more helpful when Tom Compton was out there. That would have been more helpful. Like they got Who? problems, but I I'm just saying the Niners have problems. Is offensive line their primary problem? Like, corner is a fire drill right now. But, okay, maybe I've spent too much time on it. You're right. But the, they they drafted two corners, guy. They, I know. They used, and yes, it's not like, I, well, I, we, John, they're two on seventh-round picks. One guy was a third-round pick. So it's like, well, hey, how's he going to get on the field? You got Richard Sherman, Darrell Revis, and Deion Sanders out there. I'd go, yeah, it makes sense, right? It's hard for Jonathan Kaminga to get some run. Your fucking team's really good. It's another thing when you're like these two random corners that were not even on the team in August that you're just like, we're just letting go down with the ship with Josh Norman. Now, I, I think I, Lenore just had a baby. So who knows, like the last couple of days. It's that, but, it, but it's not about today specifically, even no, though Norman, not. like you said, represents it today. It's, it doesn't even feel close to letting those guys on the field. Just, we're going down with Dre and Josh Norman. Like it's, that to me is pretty head scratching. Yes. When, to me, Josh Norman's not just representative today. It's representative of that draft. The second they signed him, they were compromising what they're about. Well, why they, why'd they sign him, right? Because they were desperate to win and they, they just were felt more comfortable so I get with a veteran. It. You make compromises when you're desperate. You take loans from sharks and you make compromises. But why would they but, be desperate when they drafted two corners? Like, isn't that part of the deal? I, I, it bit them. They were desperate. They missed. They weren't ready. Whatever. Couldn't coach him up. Like, we could we could figure out the 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 steps along the chain of player selection and development, whether they missed on them, whether they can't coach them up, whether they don't trust them, whether they're, they're risk averse and they're not willing to put them on the field, whatever it is, they went and they compromised and they got Josh Norman and it, and yes, he, somebody pointed out, cause I pointed this out to you the other day when you're like, get him off the field. And I said, well, he has forced a couple of fumbles. He, it, the risk of Josh Norman bit you. And I, you know, the other day, a few weeks ago, we talked about Trent Cannon. And you said, yeah, I, I was at the Sunday night. Was that a Sunday night game? You're like, I'd cut him to send a message. At no, least that was it, it, it was it was the day game against Seattle where he muffed the punt and yeah, then fumbled okay. it again on the same deal. At least that was a mistake of just sometimes you play the game and th shit happens. Well, my but issue this, was not, I didn't know anything about the guy's character yeah, or anything. No, it was just like, this, this cannot be tolerated. I'm when saying, they remember how hard they tried in that I'm game? I'm saying that is more tolerable than what Josh Norman did on Sunday. I agree, because I bet they would say, listen, we love the kid. He made a mistake, full speed. And I would get it. My point on cutting him was that, and this goes back to everything. You guys are just tolerating everything. Everything is tolerated. So, yeah, like Belichick has cut a lot of players for fucking up football, right? Like you, you fumble in a big spot. He might cut you. Hey, just want to tell you guys to check out Liquid IV. Use the code HAM to get 25% off and go hydrate. Yep. Also, you want to get your gamble on? Go to mybookie.ag, use the promo code HAM1, and gamble away. Because, like, that's not, this is the big leagues. That is not tolerated. 
And then when that gets tolerated, then the Josh Norman thing, and you could be like, well, they didn't let Josh back into the game. It was already too late. Like, he's already, he's been getting smoked, and you let him stay out there. Like, you're already tolerating his poor play. Every single week, you're tolerating his poor play. It's like Fred Warner, for example, clearly is not playing as well as he's played the last couple weeks. But you're all in on drafting the guy, signing him to a big contract. Like, you, he's your captain. Like, if he's going to struggle, he's going to struggle, but you're not getting rid of him or whatever. This guy just comes out of nowhere, and you're just kind of letting him dictate the terms of all these plays. And I, why would I be shocked Josh Norman doesn't get released or whatever? They didn't do anything with, with uh, Compton, even though situations are very different. Like you said, Cannon. one is a football mistake, or Cannon, one, one well, is a football yeah, mistake. I, I think... I think I think there's a difference. They just tolerate in the message. everything. Yeah, but I but to me, can it like people fumble the, like people fuck up football games? And I don't know what you've put on tape and what you've put in practice and what you've put in the meeting room. Why well, just and, they don't have anyone else probably? To well, yeah, but what I'm saying is what Josh Norman did to me is inexcusable, inexcusable for a veteran in a desperate game. As of recording this on Sunday at five thirty at night, do you think Josh Norman survives? I, I mean, I don't know. I really don't know. I would not shock me to see him cut on Monday. But but you're not necessarily expecting it because I'm not. No, I don't really know what to expect. That's the well, problem. They have right no rhyme or reason sure with anything. The they have no of. rhyme or reason with anything they do right now. It just feels like everything's just out of whack. The whole thing's just out of whack. And that draft, Josh Norman, it all encompasses like what is going on here? What is going on? It's, this is not three-dimensional chess at the moment, no, as we like to say. They just got curb stomped by Colton McCoy in Kingsbury. And, and, and listen, like I said several weeks ago, even good coaches have rough stretches. It's now snowballing into it's more than just X's and O's. And, and Norman it represents that, right? Yeah, to me, that's the difference between him and Cannon is like, if you're going to lose, lose, but don't lose like this. Don't lose shooting yourself in the foot with, with mental lapses, like ego lapses, like trying to fight with a guy. Well, my, my and and my belief is with football stuff, I give longer ropes to like obviously the two fumbles with Kittle and Ayuk today hurt right. They were bad, <laughs> they hurt. Yeah. Both those two guys in both those two instances were trying to make plays right. They, you know, Kittle's running through guys. He did like a, he did like a, a leap. <laughs> He's just trying to make shit happen. Same with Ayuk. Ayuk's having his breakout game. He's just making plays. He's trying to get shit done. And both I those guys came back and made more plays to make up for it. They combined for almost 200 yards receiving and two touchdowns. Just making plays. And I think sometimes, like I, because they're two of your better players, so I, I'm gonna live with their mistakes. I just go back to Belichick. Like obviously Gronk. And Edelman were allowed to fumble, but his margin for error with the random guys, I it sets the tone for those guys laying it all on the line, and then you lost like in that individual game. The cannon fumble really hurt, and then today the Norman thing again. Did that Norman penalty? Is that the reason they lost the game? Of course not. <laughs> the reason because they couldn't tackle anyone in the open field. Colt McCoy. Someone texted me his stats, texted me his stats at halftime, and it was like, I don't even think the guy broke a sweat. I mean, it looked like, it's probably he what he looked like against Texas 15, Tech. 12 of 15 for 145 at the half. It was probably what he looked like against Iowa State or Texas Tech back in like 07. And you're just... John, how about his postgame stats? 22 of 26? Now, the one Connor was a little dump off screen pass that he took far, but, you know... I thought he was just that, that the deep ball was perfectly shot, right? The the deep ball that he hit to Kirk when like that's another example. Right now, Hufunga's playing. They have injuries. Jimmy's hurt. Uh, Tart's hurt. Ward. Like, you just Jimmy got injuries. Ward. Yeah, Jimmy Ward's hurt. So you have a guy who's a backup player, and I, Cl- I, I give Cliff credit. Like he has his backups in. They have a schemed play the way that formation was to get a one-on-one situation with Kirk on Hufunga. Yeah. Clearly, right? The way they put him in the slot, the way he ran his route, and they know what? Hufunga's not going to be able him. to run with him. And ultimately, you have to, quote-unquote, execute the pass, right? You've got to be accurate. And this happens throughout every game that you see during the week, right? There's a specific call against a specific player, and sometimes they hit and sometimes they miss. But like Cliff, it felt like that play... 
the play that the, the screen to uh, – because it was like, oh, they're going to sack Cole. Oh, no, actually, it's a screen. And wouldn't you say, like, it felt he was very in control of dictating the terms as a play caller? And he's yeah. just – I think he's been in control all season. Like, just yeah, – he's got really good players. They have a lot of team speed. They clearly just have a lot of team depth. Like, that, that to me was indicative today. Like, one team – has a lot of has a lot of team depth of NFL players of NFL players, and the other team is just like some of their backups feel like guys you would get rid of in a heartbeat. Like, don't you think that the the Arizona Cardinals just going into the season felt pretty good? Like James Connors, our third running back, right or whatever, right? He's just a backup, but we feel very very comfortable with him on the team. Where clearly the Niners, like, yeah, we drafted Trey Sermon in the third round, and we don't even think he's good. And you'd be like, well, how do you know what they think of him? Well, or don't they trust de- him or whatever. They, yeah. yeah, they deactivate him. He's a healthy scratch. <laughs> That's- Which normally, what do we always talk about draft? When you talk about college players getting drafted, particularly juniors, and I'm not, this is just in general. If you ever have this conversation with somebody like, well, if you want to go pro now, just go. Well, oh, yeah, it might be a fifth rounder. And there's a big difference between being a fifth rounder or a second rounder or a fifth rounder and a third rounder. Because when you're the higher you're drafted, the more invested in you a team is. The more benefit of the doubt, the more chances they give you. He's not getting any – like, they're not treating him like they like them in the draft. They're treating him like they don't like him. It's wild. They thought he was ready to play because they played him. It's not like he hasn't – it's not like Aaron Banks, right, where he hasn't played. They thought Trey Sermon was ready to play. They've been playing him early in the year they played him, tried to play him. And they haven't and seen the, him and, since. And unlike the Norman situation with the rookie corners – Trey Sermon not playing or playing doesn't necessarily impact them as much because the guy they are playing is really good, right? Elijah Mitchell looks fantastic. So it's not like we're more arguing of like, how do you fuck up the pick like that? Why didn't you just take another player that could have helped you at another position? Like you just got a player that you don't think is good enough. Where, But running back's not their issue, right? When Elijah Mitchell's in the game, he's really good. The Norman thing is like, well – he wasn't your guy. You had to sign him out of desperation, and then you keep playing him, and he's getting smoked. He and he's now having crazy penalties. Like, what's the point? I get signing a. It's funny when uh, in, in football, and Rogers said this about a guy they signed to, just because it's the football lingo. Like, this guy was on the street. We call them street free agents. Even though a vet like Richard Sherman was a street free agent. No, he's not on the street. He's a multimillionaire living in a big home who's just waiting for a call. He's not like he's not like a bum on the street, but he was a Josh Norman would have been considered in NFL lingo a street free agent who had no connection to the program, right? It's not like, you know, Josh, he'd been he'd been on the Niners three years ago for Kyle's first two years. He's comfortable with Kyle. It's not the case. He hadn't been around. Like you just signed him and then you're you're letting to go down with him? That's what doesn't make sense to me. They're like Okay, he's getting smoked. Well, the rookies will get smoked too. At find least somebody, like, yeah, well, find another street free agent. Like, say what you want about Akella Weatherspoon. He was hit or miss. At least he was just always out there, and you just like, well, he's either going to be good enough or he's not, but you drafted him high. Let's see what he has. Yeah. Right? And then ultimately you can move on when he's not good enough. But Josh, whether you cut him tomorrow, cut him at the end of the season, whatever, he, he's just such a short-term Band-Aid that is not covering up the wound. The wound has been leaking blood the moment he showed. Now, he's made a couple tackles and maybe the Colts game. Like, he has made a couple plays, but it's all tackles, like a linebacker. He can't cover anybody. He can't cover anybody because he can't run, guy. He cannot run. Marquise and Parker. Then, and then he's a PI machine. Marquise Parker in the stream uh, talking shit, but he used his full name on the internet, so I got to give him his credit. Y'all trash, LMFAO. And was talking big shit on Twitter during the offseason. I seen this flawed roster and terrible head coach miles away. I did hate the cornerback situation the whole offseason. I do think one thing that's been really apparent watching them or just like is glaring is that it feels like there are some really high-end players and then a, a roster around them that can't do enough to help them. Well, like if you if you ask like Bears fans like why they're really mad, they'd be like, well, because we really only have like two sweet guys and then most of our guys are kind of average, right? The Niners, you can count – five or six players the league would love to have, right? Trent Williams got an elite left tackle. Debo's a stud. Ayuk, like, listen, they can say whatever they want about him practicing. Like, he's an elite talent. Like, that. Dante Pettis' is best day, he never sniffed having that in the bag. Kittle, when he's healthy, is a monster. Nick Bosa is just an elite pass rusher. 
Hell, even Eric Armstead, who's not in those guys' group, is a starter slash getting huge reps for every team in the league, right? Fred Warner starts for every team in the league. So it's like you have, you don't just have two like blue chippers, you have a ton of them. And then, and you can throw an Armstead there as well. So it's like, what? And hell, Elijah Mitchell immediately goes like, this guy's playing for every team in the league, <laughs> right? So it's like, what is going on? We well, yeah. can't cover a soul. You can't open field tackle anymore. But to me, it's not even just the open field tackle guy. It's they, they just feel like they're getting out schemed on a weekly basis. They feel like they're pushing the wrong button a lot. Yeah, that's what's crazy on both sides. It's like, well, the offense doesn't quite really hit. And defensively, it feels like they're always against the ropes. And part uh, of that is when you when you get run on, I think when you get run on, it can be very demoralizing. Because then it just opens up the pass and it feels like they're hitting you at every angle. They're running it on you. They're hitting deep balls, PIs. You're like, what the fuck? Duck Stars has a good comment. It goes back to leadership thing. There's no one in the locker room that steps, steps up and tells Josh Norman to sh sit down and shut up. Yeah, I mean, it's Tavon Wilson is the guy trying to get him to shut up, right? Screaming at him to calm down. He's a Belichick guy. He's played for the Patriots. Yeah, they, yeah Tavon Wilson's a veteran. Just screaming at him to calm down. And Josh kept shoving him. It's like, Josh, you're wrong, buddy. And I and listen, I, I can be... My older days is probably more of a hothead. I don't, I don't get as angry as I used to. But I understand in the heat of the moment, when you're angry, it's hard to think. But clearly, it's in the NFL, guys are able to kind of most level-headed good players, right, can kind of pull back immediately when they realize they screwed up. It was clear they could not. His own teammates couldn't calm the guy down. And no. he was wrong. Like, bro, you you got the flag. It's on you. That happened. On you. Also, it was just Cliff. They just got in his dome. Who, right? Cliff? They, yeah, I mean, like, he was acting like he was up 43-14 to 14 in a college football game. Like, well, you weren't, you know? And... It was Cliff that was on the sideline laughing. And I don't blame him. Cliff he knew he was in his bro. dome because he knew he had the answers to the quiz and the Niners didn't. But that, that goes back to the overall arching thing that you started off with. Why are they letting Josh Norman dictate some of the terms of their success or failures? That's what's crazy to me. Like, It'll why tell is me, it him? If they, you know what, like if they don't cut him on Monday or whenever, Sunday night, I don't know. Then it, that's a message too. Because what would their devil's advocate be like? Well, who's going to cover Robert Woods next week? Well, not Josh. Nobody. <laughs> yeah. Nobody at this see, rate. See if Lenore Thomas, a dude on the practice squad, I don't know, see anyone else beside this dude. And listen, I, I do in a weird way. Today was a clown show by him. I appreciate his game. Any corner that will be physical, he's a great tackler. He is not like a lot of corners get the knock for just being kind of soft. That's he not, might have tackled Eno really, Benjamin, right? He would. Eno Benjamin could not have run over Josh Norman. Like that's what I thought when that play happened was, did the Niners give up a touchdown to prove a point to Josh Norman, or did Josh Norman let his team down on that play again? Josh Norman's uh, penalty came back to bite the Niners again because he rightfully got benched and he wasn't on the field when Eno Benjamin ran that touchdown in. Yeah, you're right. I don't see how you could bench a guy for a half who's a free agent that you pulled out of your ass and then still keep him on the team after the incident like that, after you just lost. Like, there has to be some sort of, like... It's an easy one. It's an well, easy one. Well, to me, my canon thing, and again, I, I don't necessarily know all the dynamics of the locker room. Maybe they'd be like, listen, no one was mad at him for muffing and fumbling. Like, that, that didn't reflect anything. It, it wouldn't prove a point. Like, maybe that's what they would say. This one, there has to be some guys in the locker room going... You know, are we we are what we tolerate, and right now they're tolerating it. I think one problem I think a lot of fans have, uh, do my text messages, some group text messages I'm on. It just feels like everything's being tolerated. Like there's no for the Kyle being this kind of weird old school hard ass for being a younger guy. It's like he picks his the weirdest battles, but then he doesn't attack the easy one. Like like you said, if they don't cut Norman tomorrow does he have naked pictures of Kyle or something? Like what, what could possibly be the thing? How, how could you possibly, how could 